Hello there. Thank you so much for joining with us as we pray for the persecuted church this Christmas. You may be thinking, why at Christmas? Why at this time when we're celebrating, when everything is about joy and peace and love, are we praying for the persecuted church? Well, through the years, Christmas and Easter have been times when extremist groups have targeted Christians for attack. Churches have been bombed. There have been massacres that have happened at this time. And so we're coming together particularly to pray for the persecuted church at this time. In this nation of the UK, we are still able to meet together, to worship, to have our carol services and everything else that we associate with Christmas as we celebrate the birth of our Saviour Jesus Christ. But in many countries around the world, believers do not have the freedom to do that. They have to meet in secret if they are able to meet together at all at this time. According to the figures from Open Doors UK, at least 340 million Christians around the world face systemic discrimination, unfair treatment and persecution. That means that one in eight Christians are facing either extreme, very high or high levels of persecution, even as we are doing this now. That can include anything from execution, imprisonment, torture, being denied access to education, being denied access to medical supplies, to food supplies, especially during this COVID crisis that we've been going through. In many places where food has been being supplied, Christians have been turned away simply because they do not worship the same God as the rest of the people in their villages or in their towns. Many Christians now face false accusations. Many countries are operating anti-conversion laws and so Christians are being targeted through people falsely accusing them of making forced conversions and pastors and believers are being imprisoned. They're being fined heavily when they have actually done nothing wrong. In many countries, Christian women face abduction or forced marriage away from their Christian belief. So at this time, Jesus said that if one part of the body suffers, the rest of the body suffers with it. And we, even though we are looking forward to enjoying Christmas here in the UK, we stand together with our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are facing persecution this Christmas. We're praying for their safety. We're praying for those who have been displaced. We're praying for those who are still standing strong and witnessing for Jesus. We're praying for them that the Lord will give them boldness of witness. And as Jesus told us to, we are going to be praying for those who persecute them. So please join with us now as we pray for the persecuted church. Hello, we're going to pray for those members of the persecuted church who've been displaced because of persecution. But to start with this, as it's Christmas time, I want to remind us that Jesus suffered this himself. So I'm just going to read from Matthew's Gospel, just a few verses. And now when the wise men had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed from Egypt and was there until the death of Herod. Let's pray. Ah, oh, Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for this time of year when we can remember your birth this joyous time of year 
when we remember that you came to earth and gave of yourself. You came yourself, which is the greatest gift to mankind. And we know that you understand what the persecuted church is going through because you have been there yourself. And as a young child, you had to flee your homeland and go elsewhere because somebody was seeking to kill you. You know what is needed. I thank you, Lord, that you are with each and every person who's had to leave their home maybe leave their country, maybe living in a refugee camp, maybe starting in a totally new locality. But you understand and you are with them. I pray for your protection over each and every one of these people and that they will remember at this Christmas time they are not alone. You are with them. You are taking care of them. And you, you love them so much, so much, Lord. So I pray for the angels of Psalm 91 to escort each and every one of these people that have been displaced from their homes because of persecution. I pray that they will be blessed in many, many ways but in the way they most want to be blessed, Lord, that they will come to have a closer relationship with you, Lord. They love you and they're prepared to stand for you and that's why they've had to leave, Lord. And your love is greater. You love them and you've chosen them and I thank you for that, Lord. But Lord, we also read later on in Acts that persecution came on the church there. The church had been born by this time. Jesus is back in heaven. And persecution came then. And it caused the church to flee. It left Jerusalem and dispersed around and about. And in doing so, it brought the good news to more and more people. And it spread throughout the empire, the Roman Empire and beyond. So we thank you, Lord. We don't want to see our brothers and sisters being persecuted, but we thank you for the good that you can do out of this. We know you haven't caused this persecution, but you are bringing this horrible situation to have some good and that your word will spread and more people will hear about Jesus and know Jesus loves them. Jesus wants to have a relationship with them. Jesus died for them. So we thank you at this Christmas time, Lord. We thank you that you came and was born as a man. A man who would give his life for each one of us. Each one of these people that have been dispersed. So that we would no longer be separated from you. But able to live with you in eternity. That's abundant life in any direction you look. And we just thank you Lord. And we just ask for each of those people that have been displaced. They will have a realisation this year this Christmas, of the abundant life they have in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you today for the courage of our brothers and sisters in Christ who face such terrible dangers simply for following Jesus. And yet, Lord, I know that they have requested not that we would pray for persecution to be removed, but to pray that they would stand strong and to pray that they would be faithful in their witness. Lord, I pray 
that through these courageous men and women, you would bring the gospel into many, many lives. The Lord, you will continue to give them the courage, the strength, the boldness, the resources and everything else that they need to carry the gospel message into their homes, into their communities, into their schools, wherever they are. Lord, I thank you. These are those who have counted the cost and still continue to tell people the good news about Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would command your angels concerning them to guard them in all their ways. And Lord, I pray that wherever they go, the word of God would spread rapidly and be honoured. I pray that they would preach the gospel with boldness and that many, many souls would be saved through the faithful witness of my brothers and sisters in Christ who are declaring the truth of the gospel in such difficult circumstances. Help them, Lord, I pray. Be with them, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, it is our privilege today to pray for our brothers and sisters in the persecuted church around the world who are imprisoned for their faith in Jesus. It is a challenge to pray for those who are carrying out such atrocities. But we remember your words as you hung on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They were not aware of the full scope of their wickedness. They did not recognize you. So it is little wonder that they recognize your followers today. You are the great softener of hearts. And so we pray that those who carry out such dreadful acts will realize that these who are going through great tribulation have a greater glory awaiting them. And that in itself will be a witness and a testimony to the living reality that Jesus and heaven is real and that repentance is required. We pray, Father, that you will break down the barriers in men's hearts today so that Christ can be born in anyone's heart, anywhere, because God is gracious and kind and faithful. So, Lord, we ask that these persecutors will be reached for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for taking this time 
during this busy Christmas period to pray with us for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. They really do appreciate your prayers. And one of the reports that came back from Afghanistan last year when the Taliban took over was that Christians there could actually physically feel the effect of the prayers of the saints. It was giving them boldness and witness and more than anything, they were feeling the presence of Jesus with them and the glory that will be revealed in the age to come. So please do keep praying for them. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and it is effective. So your prayers for the persecuted church will never, ever be wasted. They're powerful. So please keep praying for them. Please pray for organizations such as Open Doors, the Barnabas Fund, World Compassion, Release International, who are working with the persecuted church. They're training believers in how to deal with persecution. They're getting aid out to them where they can, getting Bibles to them, whatever they can to support the persecuted church. Please get in touch with them. See what you can do, how you can give, how you can help. Remember, you can always keep praying, but they are specifically directing their ministry to aiding the persecuted church in whatever way they can. So please do support their work. And please pray for the launch of the World Watch List 2022. That's on the 19th of January, hosted by Open Doors UK, where MPs from all parties are invited to come and hear about what is happening with the persecuted church and to get them on board in the fight against persecution. That's on the 19th of January. So far, at least 90 MPs have indicated that they are planning to attend. Please pray that more will attend and that those who have already stated that they will attend will actually be there. So God bless you this Christmas. I pray you have a wonderful, wonderful time. But please remember to keep praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ. They need your prayers. God bless you. Bye bye.